Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Ford, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and today on the podcast, installment number six in a seven part series. And today we are talking about staff retention, staff shortages. And we are talking about how you hold on to your staff and what to do if you can't get access to staff in the middle of a labor shortage. This is something that we have had to work diligently with our clients on in the last couple of years. And this doesn't look to be something that's going to fix itself potentially ever in our industry. But let's just focus on the next couple of years and let's not consider that this is going to be something that is a forever scenario in our industry. You ready? Let's do it. This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. So staff shortages have become a very real thing for businesses. And it's impacting businesses even when they're experiencing such a high growth rate within their business. Um, and it has been the demise of businesses even at their peak over the past couple of years. Let me help you understand how. If a business is doing very, very well and their growth is off the charts, as you grow, you need more people to absorb the increase in work that's required to fulfill the growth in the business. But if you can't get access to the workforce to help sustain that growth and to absorb the amount of work that goes into growing the business, the business ends up suffering and customers get upset. They decide to no longer frequent your business because you perhaps have to close uh, earlier every single day or they're not getting the same quality of service that they normally get. So a business that's experiencing really high growth can end up going out of business eventually because they simply can't get the staff to support the amount of work that they need to, to sustain the revenue that's coming in. And this is something that I have seen again and again and again. And I've got to tell you, folks, it's heartbreaking. These are businesses who are going out of business as a consequence to um, historical issues that we've got as an industry. Now, a lot of you will have heard this term, the great resignation. And the hospitality industry has really been hit quite significantly by this shift in um workforce migration. Uh, as a result of the pandemic, we had a lot of people decide that they no longer wanted to stand on their feet for 12 hours a day, or they didn't want to do it for minimum wage, or they, <clears throat> excuse me, they wanted to go back to doing the work that they uh, were qualified for in university, whatever it is. We have seen uh, it become very, very difficult to get staff and very, very expensive to get staff. I am seeing regularly jobs being advertised for baristas here in Sydney at $60 an hour. $60 an hour for barista when the minimum wage is $25. Now, I'm not saying an ad here and an ad there for $60 an hour. I am seeing regularly cafes advertising $60 an hour, minimum 50 hours a week for baristas. Did, this to me seems like a short-term fix for a long-term problem. And I, I don't know how this plays out long-term. But what I do want to say to you is if you have staff, the way that you retain them is is a couple of different things. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, know why they want to be working for you and know why you want them working for you. Having staff is in our industry a very misunderstood thing because in many countries, baristas make minimum wage. 
if you're going to pay shit wages to somebody who is going to give you a significant amount of their time and the effort that they're going to use to be the face of your business to your customers and make really great beverages, but you don't have a growth plan for them, you're giving them no incentive to stay. And what we are seeing more and more and more is that people are coming into, particularly Gen Z, are coming into the workforce, in the coffee industry, asking one particular question. What's your growth plan for me? And I've said it, I don't know how many times on the podcast after the part, over the past 12 months. If you don't know what your growth plan is for them and you don't know what your growth plan is for you and you can't share that with them, I'm sorry to say, folks, but they're going to go and find somebody who can, even if they end up taking the job with you. The moment they find someone who can offer them a long-term strategy and more money, they're going to go there. So the best way that you can protect yourself and your business from losing stuff is give them a reason to stay. Find out what it is they want to stay. Is it that they need a certain amount of money? Come to an agreement, agree that they'll stay for 12 months on that salary, on that education plan, and you'll revisit it after 12 months with regular check-ins over that process. We have found significant success with clients when we help them focus on understanding how to implement a focused growth strategy, an individualized growth strategy for each of their staff. Now, I, you might be out there saying, oh my God, that's so much work. Yeah, it is. But this, this is what we should have been doing all along as an industry. We should have been trying to figure out how to pay staff better and retain them based on a long-term growth strategy. So as you can see, <clears throat> as you can see, if we do well with our foundational business fundamentals and we understand how to run our business and we know how to work out profitability and we are clear about supply chain and we have a strategy for maintaining our staff, we're really putting together all the really important fundamentals that are required to keep a business moving and keep it moving well. However, folks, none of it's easy. It's all really, really exhausting. And, you know, the challenging times that are ahead are going to mean that if you can get ahead of it, and you can start to get the clarity that's required to know where you're going in each of these lanes. The six lanes that we've spoken about so far. When you have the clarity, you'll start to operate at kind of a hum. And what that means is you will it will become less and less friction filled. Uh, there will be less friction as you move through and develop these strategies. You will find a hum where all of these things kind of work really well together. And that's what we're always aiming at when we deal with clients and trying to get their business flowing better. I hope this has been helpful. We've got one episode to go and that's gonna be focused on things like education and technology and how we're gonna get you ready uh, to be adaptive in the future. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with your friends. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.